increased physical access to markets, enhanced trade environment, improved business competitiveness. The Eastern Africa sub-region, a regional economic block with enormous economic potential, home to a population of close to 170 million people, covering the surface area of 2,440,409 square kilometers, with per capita income of 2,429. It is a homogeneous region committed to regional integration. In spite of its favorable economic potential, the region over the years has been plagued by bottlenecks such as poor physical infrastructure and other non-tariff barriers that greatly constrain efficient trading. These deficiencies have increased trade transaction costs and depressed trade opportunities within the region. It is against this background that in 2010, Trademark East Africa, an organization funded by a range of development agencies, intervened with the aim of facilitating prosperity growth in East Africa through trade. The organization's three major areas of strategic intervention are increased physical access to markets, enhanced trade environment, and improved business competitiveness. Our main areas of strategic intervention uh, included unblocking um, key bottlenecks, especially around the ports of Mombasa, Dar es Salaam, and the major corridors. In Uganda, specific intervention in the category of improved access to markets included physical improvement of border infrastructure. This is the new Busia one-stop border post. A transformation from a small border crossing with outdated infrastructure to a modern integrated border management facility with coordinated procedures. In place, there is a customs shed and a warehouse, border official offices, staff quarters, and internal roads based on the planned business flow and movement of people. The one-stop border post system is designed to combine the activities of both countries' border agencies at either a single common location or at a single location in each direction without compromising public safety or revenue collection. This intervention has tremendously reduced both transit costs and the time taken to cross the border. In the past, you used to have poor infrastructure. Um, you used to have lengthy processes. Someone had to stop on one side of the border in another country and then cross and uh, stop on another side of the country. But even when they stopped in the two different countries, they had to go through various institutions in different uh, locations. For example, one had to go to immigration, he had, from there they had to go to customs, from there they moved to National Drug Authority or uh, Uganda National Bureau of Standards. And all that uh, meant a lot of time wastage at the borders. But with one so border post, you stop in one place and all the business is done in one place. So that automatically cut down on average, 60% of the time it takes to clear the goods at the borders. In some stations like Russia, the cut down has been realized at 80%. At Mutukula border crossing with Tanzania, trademark East Africa, Temea, invested 4.5 million US dollars to construct and operationalize a one stop border post. Facilities include customs and immigration offices, a police post, a customs inspection shed warehouse, and staff quarters, as well as internal roads. A 
similar investment has been made on the Tanzania side of the border. The border is a 24-hour operation with agencies working in three shifts. The idea is to avoid repetition and duplication when processing documents and increase trade volumes to make Mutukula an attractive place to cross with ease and efficiency. At Mirama Hill border crossing with Rwanda, Timea invested $7.5 million in the construction of a one-stop border post. The physical facilities include customs and immigration offices, a customs inspection shed and warehouse, a police post, clearing and forwarding offices and internal roads that direct movement of people and goods. Timea has also made commensurate investment at Kagitumba on the Rwanda side of the border. The facility, which aims at harmonizing working procedures on both sides of the border and reducing border clearance time for goods and people by 30%, has also been installed with improved IT infrastructure. Travelers and goods entering Rwanda from Uganda now move directly to the clearing offices on the Rwandan side, where their fast contact official is a Ugandan who processes their documentation, after which they proceed to the Rwandan official all housed under one roof. The same process applies to travellers entering Uganda from Rwanda. Besides the OSBP, Timea funded construction of these two bridges located between the two border posts to support the expected surge in cross-border traffic. The adoption of one-stop controls that bring border officials from neighbouring countries under one roof has also tremendously eased immigration procedures. If we trace from more where we were. There used to be corn men in no man's land who would divert travelers and you'd find that they would not intentionally dodge going through the gazetted route, I mean offices, but because they would be uh, hijacked in between. But now that's not there because a person goes straight to one office and gets clearance uh, from there. And then two, uh, the communication we have is instant. Sometimes you would find that it would not be easy to cross over and discuss a, a matter of uh, interest. But now you discuss it there and then on the round table. So I think I must say that our work is much eased and even now officers are working more professionally. A 50-50 joint funding between Government of Uganda and Timea supported the upgrading of the 37-kilometre gravel road between Tungamo and Mirama Hill to bitumen standard. This road is a crucial link along the northern corridor between Rwanda and Uganda and connects Ntungamo to Mirama Hill's Kagitumba one-stop border posts. The road aims at improving access for both goods and passenger transport services, as well as reduce transport time and costs. It is also expected to boost the social economic development opportunities for communities living along the route. At Elegu border crossing with South Sudan, Timea is supporting the construction of a one-stop border post to facilitate trading with the East African community. On completion, the physical facilities will include administration blocks, an inspection shed to accommodate the state's border agencies, and roads to facilitate exit and entry into the OSVP. So in terms of reducing uh, border clearance time as a result of um, the physical improvement in border posts, integrated border management, it has given Uganda very, very excellent results. Enhanced trade environment is another area of Timea's intervention in Uganda. Under this intervention, Timea supported URA to introduce and extend the web-based customs clearance system called Ascuda World to all the 33 border posts. It can also be accessed by importers who now make entries from their business premises. Yeah, to a business person, uh, time is money. The less they spend in customs, the better for them. And as customs, we've set our targets for clearance of uh, our clients' cargo to at least four days. But uh, through our regular monitoring, we've seen that at times, on a month, uh, in a certain month, 
we can even be at uh, like two days, so which I think uh, wouldn't have achieved uh, if we did, had not implemented the uh, school world. You sit wherever you are, you make your declaration, you submit it online. You go to the bank, you pay, we, you're able to know the status that you've paid. We process, we process your declaration, we communicate online. So that interface with the clients has reduced. And the time the clients would have spent coming to us and moving to and fro is reduced. And indeed, you are a clients confidently attest to the convenience and ease of the system. One, we do not have to move around with documents. That is very important. With a SCUDA plus plus, we would move around with documents. Your entry gets lost. You move with it to the CBC, you move with it to the bond, you move with it wherever you are going. Because when you, you have to take it to the officer physically, and the officer's desk would be disorganized all the time. But here, we upload everything on the system. The invoice, the bill of lading, everything. So even when you lose the documents, in case of anything, we can always refer to the system. The introduction of Asikura World has really uh, benefited us on both aspects. We were able to clear faster and also more accurate uh, with less chance of documents getting lost and more clarity about uh, which steps to take as the system was directing and guiding on each and every single uh, step that we had to make. Besides elimination of paper and physical delivery of documents, the introduction of a scooter world has removed direct interface with shippers and clearing agents, a bottleneck that encourages malpractices by customs officials. A client when queried, some of them would prefer to come to us physically to answer those queries or to talk about their goods, you know, and that would subject our officers to a lot of issues. One, disruption in the course of execution of their duties. You can't continue smoothly with the first in, first out when you have a line of clientele around you. Two, of course, they would enter into negotiations which you cannot also trace and you never know what would transpire. So that is no more. Working with Uganda Revenue Authority, Treadmark East Africa implemented the electronic cargo tracking system. This is a system that electronically tracks movement of cargo within a defined area. It replaces the old one that was not only costly, but also inconvenient. We used to have a convoy system. Convoy system means that the line, the, the trucks arrive at the border, you line them up in a convoy. So you, you put a truck, an escort in front and an escort behind. If you have 50 trucks, Going to South Sudan, you escort them um, like that. Uh, it had serious challenges because if your truck came after the convoy has left, it means you had to wait for the next day for another convoy. If you reach somewhere and the one truck driver needs to excuse himself, then the, the whole convoy is disrupted. It was not facilitating business. With the new system, a transponder is attached to a track or a container. Using GPS and satellite-enabled communication, cargo is monitored along the gazetted route from the Central Monitoring Center at URA. The trucks are seared. They move while we are seeing the number of uh, the, the hours they take. The routes are gazetted. Uh, if they go off route, alarms go off. If they stop in uh, ungazetted places, alarms go off. So it has cut down on the transit time, which used to be over three days to less than uh, a day and a half. It has also cut down on the costs like theft. Because if there is an attempted theft of goods, we will intervene. And, and we've seen, we've done a couple of interventions and we think that the owners of goods are, are appreciated. On our side, as the URA and customs in particular, uh, it has helped us manage the risks of uh, dumping, uh, trans diversion. Um, it's not easy for someone who is going to South Sudan to divert and offload goods in Kampara illegally. We will get him. Electronic cargo uh, system in Uganda became a very good model for the heads of state for Uganda, um, Kenya, and Rwanda recommended, actually directed, that Uganda be used a model. Now the electronic cargo system is regional, 
and we've managed to connect with Mombasa and Rwanda. So you are able to track across the corridor. Still working with URA, Timea introduced the authorized economic operator scheme. You partner with businesses which are willing and demonstrate the ability to be compliant, to implement certain things, to be secure, uh, and then you give them the status of authorized economic operator. Nice House of Plastics, a household name and market leader in plastic products manufacturing, is one of the 45 companies on this program. They import tons of taxable raw materials required for the production line, implying that the materials had to be bonded pending URA's assessment before the company could access them. Uh, it was very difficult to deal with the Uganda Revenue Authority. They managed the bonded warehouse. They had inefficient operations in Uganda Revenue Authority. And uh, we were one of those companies where the late our founder of Nice House of Plastics, Mr. James Mulwana, would always call up the Commissioner General and the Commissioner Customs, then who was Richard Kamajigo, and request them to open up the bond so that we could run our factory operations. But these were raw materials that consistently had been brought in for almost 40 years since the companies operated. And we did not see any need for this kind of policing by Uganda Revenue Authority. When URA introduced the program, Nice House of Plastics was one of the first companies that the tax body audited. It passed the requirements to be put on the scheme. And today, both the company and URA are reaping the benefits. The product comes in and goes on the floor straight away and then we make the product and sell it. The other way it has helped, we used to pay $300 per day to the transporters to bring in our product if there was a delay in offloading the consignment while we waited for Uganda Revenue Authority. Today that does not happen. In terms of time, yes, reduce time of doing business because an AEO now you can clear in about four, average four hours, so which was initially say five days. Now, that means that that revenue which could have been held before being collected in terms of uh, actually clearing your processes, register here, is now seen as real time. Within four hours, where a client would have paid in five days, in terms of URA, you are recognizing that money immediately. Some other companies that have been approved for the scheme are Victoria Motors and Steel and Tube Industries, one of the leading manufacturers of steel products producing monthly volumes of 15,000 tonnes. Equally so, the company imports thousands of tonnes of raw materials through the port of Mombasa. We used to have an office at the border of Malaba. We used to have an office somewhere near Nairobi and also in Mombasa, particularly for this purpose. Now, all that requirement is gone. So definitely we are more competitive in terms of cost we were doing before and which we are spending now. The Uganda Electronic Single Window. Another implementation by Timea that aims at allowing over 26 government agencies and institutions handling some aspects of international trade to be on the same system. Hosted in the Uganda Revenue Authority, it brings together the agencies electronically to share the regulatory documents together. This is where applications for permits and quality certificates are made and issued online through a single window. But what it is basically saying is that uh, let's have one-stop center where we find everything. As a government, we need to be one and we need to share information and you should be able to get that information under one platform. We have now seven agencies. Those ones include Coffee Development Authority. Of course, Uganda Revenue Authority is there. We have the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. We have the National Drug Authority. We have the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, which is, is in three departments. That's Livestock, Crop and Fisheries. And then we have the Ministry of Energy, which handles the fuel marking at the borders. At the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, the agency mandated to ensure that goods traded in and out of Uganda meet the required standards, linking to the electronic single window system has drastically reduced the time taken processing the verification and subsequent certification. With the e-portal, I do not need to move. Once I lodge my entry, automatically it comes to the UNBS e-portal platform. In real time, the inspector is able to view, act on them, 
and uh, be released within the shortest period of time without someone physically moving, moving to the office. So the time is reduced from three hours to like 30 minutes at most. At Uganda Coffee Development Authority, the novel method of applying for permits and quality certificates and the subsequent issuance, all done online, have revitalized coffee exports. It eases our work and it also reduces a lot of paper we are using and time wastage. So this has shortened the work and the time of delivery of our services. And even it speeded up the exports clearance. And this is the place of a button, a certificate is generated and it is delivered into the window. Say one minute thing. On the other side, it has improved our data and collection. Because now we have consistent data between ULIA, between the exporters and us. And it has also checked if there was any coffee that we would, we would have been going without what? Passing through the system. It has checked that. In the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, where government controls both the importation and exportation of plants and animal products, as mandated by the Plant Protection and Health Act, the Ministry issues phytosanitary certificates for export of products produced in Uganda. Here, Trademark East Africa has offered support in form of equipment to kickstart electronic single window integration, and the prospects are positive. The countries we are trading with, it is easier to exchange electro documents electronically and also we reduce costs of looking around who has issued a wrong document. That has been a common arena. So when you have an interception or non-compliance, you have to go through papers and free and say who issued this document, which company was involved. But it is going to be easy now for us quickly to check the certificate you have issued and who took it and who did the inspection and we quickly detect where the problem is. So it is really positive. And also, you know, our Uganda would reduce a little bit of corruption. If you are going to pay electronically, you not interface to negotiate now how much are you going to, to give. So our fees will be up and running. We are able to be collecting the money. We shall just receive the receipt and issue a document. So it is positive. At the National Drugs Authority, Timer provided an intervention to automate business processes internally. The scheme called the National Drugs Authority Management Information System consequently links up with other government agencies through a single window. This portal is accessed by only authentic NDA clients for applications to operate pharmacies, application for importation of medicines, verification of importation of medicine or any other information about NDA. Already, substantial impact is being felt. The speed at which processes are being completed to facilitate importation of products has improved from approximately 30 days to approximately 14 days. So it's cutting the whole process by half. Improved business competitiveness is another of Timir's strategic interventions. At Uganda National Bureau of Standards, Timir is supporting the standards agency to ensure that consumer products meet modern international benchmarks. Under the Quality Infrastructure and Standards Program, QUISP, a program in the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, Timer provided funding to the tune of 1.6 million US dollars for provision of key equipment to support testing of vital products such as moisture content in grain, but most importantly, steel and cement. Now those two are very key for infrastructure development, but it also benchmarks our quality of steel in Uganda and the cement for the region to ensure that we meet the required harmonized standards. In the areas of food and food products, Timea equipped UNBS's labs with modern equipment to test for contaminants such as presence of heavy metals, pesticides, residues and levels of food additives. They have got us capacity in one area to ensure that we go into those areas where we are not, but also too, the equipment is modern technology which is good for the business community because it takes very few minutes 
for you to get the results. So the turnaround time has also been reduced. So that reduction alone is very good for the business community. It is also very good for the institution because now we can get more of the clients coming in to test their products. Within the strategic objective of improved business competitiveness, Temea is supporting the Grain Council of Uganda to raise grain quality aimed at increasing exports. The Grain Council of Uganda is a private sector intervention with membership drawn from stakeholders in the sector whose major objective is uplifting or strengthening capacity and improving the competitiveness in the national and regional markets. The intervention that we have from uh, Trademark East Africa or the funding that comes from Trademark East Africa is, is, is geared towards improving the capacity of one, the, the, the buyers and exporters, you know, improving their capacity to be able to receive, you know, high volumes of, of grains, high volumes of, of, of maize in particular, and good quality maize. Um, Trademark also sought to strengthen the capacity of the farmers to be able to produce the volumes that have the quality that will be acceptable at the buying place. Uh, we have therefore engaged in mobilizing farmers, in uh, training farmers, mainly in the East African Community Maize Grain Standard, uh, which stipulates uh, the different parameters that, 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 that are really required on the, on the market. And uh, we have linked these farmers to the warehouses that have received strengthening again from Trademark to be able to receive maize from the farmers. Additional support has been extended to Siatini, the Southern and East Africa Trade Information and Negotiations Institute. They started with institutional capacity building where Timea trained Siatini staff in project implementation, monitoring and evaluation, as well as helping them develop their internal policies. Armed with these tools, Siatini, with extra support from Timea, set off to sensitize farmers on the need to achieve the required standards for maize in order to compete favorably in the sub-region market. At the time of our intervention, there was a standard already in place. But people were not aware, people were not sensitized, people did not know what this standard meant. And that is why we had very many rejections uh, of exports of maize into the region. For example, at one point our maize was exported uh, specifically for, you know, uh, for pigs, not uh, for human consumption. So we needed to do something. So. What we did, we incestized uh, the public, uh, specifically in the districts of Nakaseke, uh, of Masindi, uh, and Lila. We built their capacity to understand why they need quality standards and two, how they can use the quality standards to increase their household incomes. George Chidabida Kamia is a farmer in Sembwa village, Bulwada Parish, Nakaseke sub-county, Nakaseke district. Maize is the major crop he grows on his 60-acre piece of land. This afternoon, he is checking on his maize being stored in his newly constructed crib. Before he acquired this facility, Chirabida was using rudimentary post-harvest practices which caused him huge losses. The agronomic practices we are using was also a suicide practices because... First, we had no bargaining power. It was the middleman to come to my field and determine how much he wishes to give me. And in most cases, it was determined by the quality of the maize because you could find almost a half of it rotten. How? We didn't know that slashing the maize is one way of making the maize to be rotten. It was not until Siatini intervened with sensitization that him, together with his farmer group, Gakweba Munno Farmers Association, began to realize the importance of applying good agronomical practices. Trademark, in conjunction with Siatini, they sensitized the farmers. By doing that sensitization, they took all the stakeholders. They started with religious leaders, the cultural leaders, 
the traders, the millers, the farmers, even these witch doctors were also called. The administration structures right from Eros 1 up to the district were called. The NGOs within here, inclusive Caritas, was also invited. So they sensitized us how we were abusing and the consequences of abusing the quality. We said, wow, having found out, we came and said, no, enough is enough. This one-ton capacity crib is one of the many benefits of the sensitization, which has tremendously transformed Chidabida's farming profitability. I bring, I put my maize here while clearing my garden. I plant in time. So many people don't have where to put their yield. And that will force them to find anybody to buy. But for me, if I sit down, should I wait for four months? How much do I need? Has it reached? Then I say, let me start sharing. It has prompted me to another level. I now process the fraud. Timea's support to women in trade has been channeled through Uganda Women Entrepreneurs Association Limited, UL, the biggest women network in Uganda, focusing on sensitization, networking, advocacy, and creating linkages to markets for their products. So we received about $300,000 from Timea over a stretched period of, of uh, from 2015. And during that process, uh, time, we spent this money on actually sensitizing. Uh, we had a target of 4,400 women. We ended up uh, sensitizing 4,701 women. We were able to open the hubs. The money actually went into equipping these hubs. They now have the tools. If they want to go and log on to the URA portal and get an online um, registration, we left them with the computers, we left them with the technical know-how. We have begun to, to see actual results. We have more women trading. We have more women trading across borders, trading in Rwanda, they are trading in DRC, they are trading across to Kenya, to South Sudan. Um, we also have a number of women who have signed up to get the Q mark, um, the quality mark from Uganda National Bureau of Standards. We have a number of women who have, are fully compliant now with uh, taxes, uh, Uganda Revenue. And our target really is to get from, from where we were to 100%. The impact created by Timir's intervention in its efforts to improve the region's business competitiveness is undisputedly significant. Overall, we think uh, we've been successful and uh, out of the independent evaluations, Uganda has scored A++ uh, over the years. And part of the success, I would say, is as a result of uh, partner confidence because uh, they believe uh, in the model uh, trademark deploys to deliver support because we are with our partners every day, providing them with the support, monitoring with them to make sure that uh, they achieve the results. And uh, I think technically we have a very good team that understands the terrain. And I will tell you that uh, recently when we met the head of state, uh, His Excellency the President, he clearly told us that he had never seen an organization like Trademark that doesn't just provide aid, but provides aid for trade. Certainly, facilitating trade within the East Africa community will have profound effects on economic growth, employment and food security, as well as presenting a more compelling case for international investors who could view the region as one contagious market.